Favorite problem in mathematics? Um, well, the problem I spent the most time thinking about with Goldbach conjecture, which is just such a beautiful problem because there's so many things to think about. Um, I think the, the most noble agenda in mathematics is the, the Langland uh, agenda, you know, to kind of unify some things in math. And that's really fun. And there's a lot of people who chase that. Uh, but there's a lot of beautiful problems. Like Bernard Tarski uh, paradox is a great example of the intersection of mathematical logic and philosophy with just good old fashioned <laughs> mathematical ingenuity. Uh, you know, and so you say, why do we care about the axioms of math, like the axiom of choice or these other things? For most mathematicians, they don't. They just accept them as givens and they just live within them. And so these are the rules of the game. But what happens is every now and then mathematicians like saying, well, if I follow these rules, their logical absurd you know, conclusion, you're going to break some stuff. Accepting the axiom of choice says that math and physics are disconnected. It's effectively what you're saying with Banach Tarski. Uh, so I think that problem really is a beautiful example of the con unintended consequences of things that you accept to be true without proof. Gödel's incompleteness um, theorem is another example of the limits of formalism, and especially relevant to us at the Hoskins Center, uh, because there's this issue of well, constructive versus intuitionistic in mathematics, and and so what can you actually build with a formal system and prove, and what is decidable or not? And completeness is always that thing that haunts you. And is your system capable of answering all the things you'd like to make statements about? So I, I really enjoy that. Now, I mean, there's a lot of nice, fun little toy problems. Like one of my favorite additive number theory problems. It's very simple. Is Lagrange's theorem. And it says any integer can be written as the sum of four squares. There's like a dozen different ways to prove it. But what's really cool is, you know, you, if you want to look at the different proof techniques, uh, you can learn an enormous amount. And also it just shows you the, the sheer diversity of mathematics, how people can take different roads. And each road has a different landscape. They have a different view. They're like one road will be in the mountains and it's long and circuitous, but it's beautiful. and has these huge peaks and valleys and occasionally the weather is a little rough, but it's a great journey. And another road will be a straight line. <laughs> it's right there. Um, others, you just get blindfolded and, 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 parachuted in you have no idea how you got there but you're there like proof by contradiction you're like well if it's true there's problems so it's not <laughs> and so uh, and all of these things can be the, the same end constructive or otherwise and so that's that's what makes math so profoundly beautiful um and gives uh, such a diverse range of thought to mathematics and i'm just really excited that there's still so many things to think about and explore and play around with. And the next generation of math is even more exciting than the prior generations of mathematics. And actually, I think in the 21st century, some of the great old problems are gonna be solved and new problems are gonna be invented. You know, I'm very optimistic.